Um, the other, another important issue is that the trade unions, because they had been playing all of these years this key role of fighting for people's economic rights. They had been bargaining for wages. They had been struggling to keep um, the working conditions for workers. They had been training and educating and helping people negotiate and working at the, at the local level with trade unions. They had a power base that was extensive and across the country and they mobilized and activated that power base. When they called general strikes, it was they called a series of rolling strikes. It was when the last strike came to the gen larger Tunis area on the 14th of January that finally Ben Ali left the country and the dictator fell um, in the middle of January of 2011. And so we see the, the critical role that the trade unions played during that, um, during that fight. What, what then happened, though, was almost as important as what had happened leading up to the dictatorship, because then the trade unions who had based this power in their ability, even during a dictatorship, to fight for the economic rights of the, of the workers, they took that information and they took that, that organization, and then they used it to create democratic space for the entire nation. And they named their role as the guarantors of the revolution. And they stepped back and stood in support of a democratic structure that would enable all Tunisians to step into a democratic space and become actors in their own destiny. And I think that this is one of the, the most powerful things that as a trade union movement they could have done and they continue to do to this day um, as, a, as a movement. They also continue to play their role as a trade union movement. And so we're able to continue to make gains even during a time of great economic and political change. So that in the last year, they were able to basically go after the whole issue of subcontracting and to reintegrate some 30,000 workers who had been subcontracted in the previous decade um, th in both private and public sector and insist that these people become full-time uh, regularized employees in both the private and the public sector. They also were able to do away with limited term contracts in the public sector. They increased, they were able to win wage increases for workers in both private and public sector, and in, it, like for t you know tens of thousands of workers, um, they were also um, able to st help stabilize the economy in the early days of the revolution, where in some cases uh, managers and owners had just fled the country, and the UGTT actually stepped in, went to the courts, and said, "We want to actually." you know, these people have gone, we need to continue to run these uh, businesses and got the courts to enable the union to take over the businesses so that they could continue running in order to keep the economy from tanking um, immediately thereafter. So they were also able to step in and play this really essential economic role in the early days of the revolution. Uh, they were also able to establish good contracts for the few workers that they were not able to get fully integrated in. So they, they ratcheted up the standards for the few people that were continued to be under contract workers. And they also were able to um, concretize more transparent rules of recruitment, which had been a real bone of contention, especially for young workers who were very unclear about how to go about getting jobs because there was a great deal of favoritism in, the, in, the, in getting jobs in the country. So they played this role. They were able to, to parlay their role as a trade union into this larger role of being guarantors of a revolution, to bringing about a revolution, to improving the economic and social rights of workers over the long term into the future, and also to, at this point, they are becoming the partners in determining economic policy for the future of the country. And what's significant about all of this is that these, this, the basis for their capacity to do this actually rested in this initial work as a trade union where they were very limited in their capacity of what they could do under a repressive government in sticking with their eyes on the prize of 
fighting for the rights and working conditions, wages and working conditions of workers through the collective bargaining process under the dictatorship. And so their, their ability and their, as, an, as a union, having stuck with that relationship and been true to their role of fighting for those rights throughout the country, in the rural areas as well as the city, actually became the basis of their ability to play this much larger role when the space, when they were able to open up the space and when the conditions became right. Now they're facing many challenges, of course, as a union. They have, there's a, they're worried about the um, effect of the Islamists um, in the country. There is, there's, a, although, Apparently, two days ago, the Islamist party in power called on the people of Tunisia to join the trade unions in the May Day parades in recognition of the role of the workers in bringing about the revolution. So there's some rapprochement there. Um, they're also concerned about the separation of powers between the state and, and religious parties um, and religious um, organizations. And they're worried there's, there's attacks on freedom of, of expression and they are also under attack for being um, destabilizing, being destabilizing the economic situation because they are being such effective advocates for the economic rights of workers. But they are, they are playing an enormously important signaling role within the Middle East region for what you can do as a trade union and how you can provide this um, over time and through political change a really true uh, voice for, for working people. And I think that one of the things that um, is really important to remember as we're looking at this is that on December 16th of 2010, you would not have found very many people anywhere in the world who would have said that there was going to be democracy in the Middle East anytime soon, maybe not within a decade, maybe not within two decades. There would have, you would not have found anybody in Tunisia, frankly, who would have said so. And on December 17th, the world changed, and within a month, we have seen the world change. So I guess the lesson from, from Tunisia is keep your eyes on the prize, stick with the workers, and be ready. Thanks very much.